Hi everybody, this is Thomas Goss. I'm a professional orchestrator and composer. That's what I do for a living, how I make my money. Um, I live in New Zealand now, but obviously I come from the United States for my accent. Um, I've been composing and orchestrating since I was a teenager, and um, now I would really like to show you guys uh, sort of how I learned it myself and you know the whole process of orchestration and the professional craft that needs to go into it. Um, now I want you guys to focus on that word craft, okay, because it um, is something that seems to be foreign to a lot of uh, composition students and orchestration students that I run into. Um, it seems to me that there's a big obsession with um, sort of following your impulse nowadays and just writing whatever you feel and then letting the musician work it out later. And um, people who do that don't tend to last for very long or become professionals, okay? I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with following your heart and being expressive and everything else. But you need to learn what the limitations are, what the parameters are for uh, the craft of orchestration, okay? Because that is, that is the heart of craft, okay? Um, I mean, you can pretty much learn everything there is to know about an orchestra uh, from a book and still not be really ready to go because you don't know what the orchestra players know. You know what? You just are looking for, from the outside, looking at what the instruments can do, how they do it, and so on and so forth. I'm hoping with this channel to take you into the inside and kind of show you how the orchestra thinks, how the orchestra players think, what the conductor has to go through when he gets a new score, and what the composer should be thinking about um, in terms of the way the orchestra works as an organism, okay? Because there's a real difference between um, kind of student orchestration and um, paint by the numbers orchestration and what I would call organic orchestration, okay? That sort of treats the orchestra like an organism, like a sort of like a living, breathing thing that's got its own kind of its own mechanisms and its own way of surviving and its own way of making itself justify. There's some other important points about craft that I'd like to make, okay? First of all, it saves you a whole lot of time, okay? Now, you have to understand, as a young artist, your time is actually fairly precious. Let's say that you do have the skills and you do have the um, abilities to eventually become a, uh, a professional orchestrator, okay? Um, if you do not learn your craft in a way that saves you time, then you're, you're never going to make all that much money. Um, and a part of the whole um, part of the whole process of being a professional composer is not saying no very often, okay? And it can actually get to be a pain in the ass, and you can get to a point where it's just feast or famine all the time. Um, and you just have to work it out. And if you've got a lot of craft that that saves time, then you can just get right into it and uh, and and learn to go from step A to step B as quickly as possible. All right, and also as efficiently as possible. Okay, another thing about craft is it kind of keeps you honest. Okay, I mean, if you know what really is going to happen when you put that pen down on the paper or you enter that note into your computer, um, you know, you, you can't lie to yourself. You can't say, oh, of course, um, you know, the French horns are going to be able to play high C's ten times in a row. Okay, well, actually, they probably can't. Or they can, but then they'll be worthless for the rest of the piece. Little bits of knowledge like that that are practical and important, that keeps you honest. Okay? And it also keeps you focused, all right? Because, you know, craft, the craft of orchestration is all-consuming. And if you're not hip to it, you can just spend a lot of time wandering in the desert, okay? Whereas if you've got the craft down, you kind of know what needs to happen next. And you can, you can take your idea and you can just spin it out onto the sheet of paper and just kind of feel the whole thing pulling you along, as opposed to getting stopped constantly and having to work things out from the beginning all the time. So that's another important feature of craft. Um, and then I think, think the most important one is, at least as far as the orchestra is concerned, it delivers the goods on time and in shape. Okay? You want to be able to hand something like this score, which I did recently. This is an education concert. Um, it's about 125 pages long. Okay? Um, I did this in about six to eight weeks. Something like that. I mean, I thought about it for a lot longer than that, and I sort of noodled around and everything, but when I actually sat down and decided to put it all down on paper, it took me about, I think eight weeks is a little too much time. I think it was more like around six weeks, and I've actually worked faster than that. Um, 
and and yet when I handed it into the orchestra, and I actually did the parts myself this time, um, which I usually don't do. Uh, when I handed it into the orchestra, the parts were all fine. Nobody, no, no, nobody in the orchestra sort of raised their hand and said, "Listen, I can't play this." Uh, and the uh, conductor didn't say, "Listen, we have to do things differently." Except for I think in one of the uh, pieces, he just uh, cut a little bit out so it would go faster. Which you know, that wasn't any fault of me as an orchestrator. It just was like they decided that they wanted to get through one piece a little quicker. So that's something I felt proud of. I felt that my um, knowledge of craft had allowed me to to do something really good really quickly and obviously make some money that I need for my family okay um, that's the thing about being a professional is is that like just like any other profession um, there's always personal consequences you let's say you work just like a nine to five job at, as at an office or something like that you know if, if you don't know how to do your work right at that office there's going to be personal consequences Okay, and that's what it is about orchestration and composition. No matter how inspired and creative it is, it, there really is, you know, a practical side to it. And and if you are not practical, um, you're just never going to make any money with it. You might have a, the time of your life, and, and I'm hoping that you do, whether you're a professional or an amateur watching this video. But my job is to show you how I do it for a living and, and why I get paid. Okay, which is going to take a lot of videos. Um, I plan to go through the craft, you know, showing you how to move from step A to step B, the logic about it, and you know what an orchestra needs, and so on. And I'm also going to show you some of the more traditional things you'll see in an orchestration book, like um, instrumentation, um, like what all the instruments do, um, what are the different auxiliary instruments, you know, say flute, piccolo, alto flute, bass flute, um, how they're used. Um, but you know that is just one small part. Um, what I consider to be the craft of orchestration goes way deeper. And one of the things I'm very excited about in this series is that I'm going to be able to um, do an in-depth analysis of um, of different pieces that I love, like like for instance the Rite of Spring. I, I know that piece backwards and forwards. I've heard it a million times. And in fact, that's kind of how I taught myself orchestration with no insult to the uh, people who wrote the books that I read, um, just actually reading Stravinsky's score over and over and over again and seeing what all the instruments did, that helped me enormously as a young composer. So that's something I hope you do too. <laughs>